the cock 45 here with a Sig Sauer P320. <laughs> oh, look at that smoke. A little pot smoking right off. <laughs> can't see the target. <laughs> That's a watering down a little bit. Oh man. <laughs> Let's just clear everything out. Yeah, Hickok 45. I happen to have, uh, well, today in, uh, when is it, June of 2014. And uh, on planet Earth, uh, this gun is new, 320, P320 from SIG, relatively new. It was introduced, I think, at the SHOT Show. We saw it at the SHOT Show in uh, Las Vegas in January. Uh, John and I held it, and we uh, thought we might like to get a hold of one. Take a look at the thing here. It is, uh, I guess, SIG's first striker-fired pistol like this in this format. And that is the one of the big differences. It is polymer frame, and it is striker-fired. You know, all the SIGs that I have brought out, yeah, I always talk about the hammer fire and the double single action, and how it's not my favorite. I think they listened to me, and they went to work designing this. You think that was it? Well, uh, that's what it is. Let me turn it over. It's a, uh, it's striker fired all right. And uh, it feels like a SIG in a lot of ways. Feels better than uh, some that I have fired. Now I like a, a 226. Boy, they are sweet to shoot. But you still get that high bore axis and everything. This one is, it, it fits the hand well. And you don't have quite as high a bore axis. And, and it just, uh, it, it feels more like a lot of the uh, really cool, desirable striker fired firearms that we're uh, familiar with and we have come to love whether it's a, a Walther, a PPQ or a Glock and some of the others really and by the way this is a donated gun and we appreciate that from Top Gun Supply and where is it uh, it's just outside of Cleveland Chesterland I think Chesterland Ohio uh, Top Gun Supply uh, gifted us this supporting the channel and we really appreciate that I tell you it's just really nice to uh, to have the support we have and especially with a new gun that we've had trouble getting a hold of could not get it from sig really and they've helped us some too but we just we couldn't get one of these so it's, it's just a doubly nice let me tell you about the gun a little bit uh, that was federal ammunition we're firing and uh, thanks to federal right appreciate that this gun is similar in a way to the uh, 250 the sig 250 uh in that that it's modular and the chassis comes out. Let me take it. It's very simple to field strip. I'll show you what before it gets too hot. But shooting fast like that gets them warmed up. If you didn't know that. So to break it down, of course we're empty. Pull down the take down lever like that. You know, typical SIG. Pretty simple to take apart. I bet that barrel is warmish. Yeah, a little warm. So you know, SIG quality. You know, you really, uh, and I have always said that. I, I might criticize SIG at times uh, for some of the design that's not my preferred design, but I always, I think, I almost always brag on the quality because SIGs are well made and they're reliable. I, I don't know if I've ever had a SIG just malfunction on me, you know, that wasn't some kind of weird ammo problem or a magazine problem. I don't know if I've ever even had one malfunction. I, I'm short term memory loss, who knows? But in terms of being modular, what I was saying, now the, the 250 I think is a hammer fired gun, you know, but it, it had a chassis like this that would come out and uh, I think you could buy a pack and get a, a extra slide with it and all that. I've never had one of those or even uh, fired one. But this chassis you see, this metal part in here comes out, you take the, uh, and I'll struggle a little bit probably. You know, I always do. You pull out the slide lock pin like that and then you push a little forward and pull up on it and this is actually where the serial number is. This is considered the gun. This is what you would need to have an uh, FFL license to transfer and all that. Well, depending on where you're doing it, but to buy. Uh, this is the gun, okay? <laughs> this is what makes it a gun. And you can just lay that aside. And so the rest of this is just a piece of polymer. And uh, so you can order uh, extra frames. I don't know if you can yet. But I'm, I'm told they'll have one in like a compact. Uh, this was really a full-size gun. 
We're going to do a little comparison with the Glock 19 because I don't have a 17, but this is really comparable to a 17. It's a full-size firearm. So I'm assuming uh, eventually there might be a, a mid-size, and, and I don't think this is mid-size, and then a compact version of it. And you'll be able to take, and I, I may be misspeaking, some of that may be available already, and I don't know it, but you'll be able to just pop this trigger assembly, this part that's actually the gun, into the other frame. See, and uh, you can just order the frame and have it shipped to your house. It's like buying a loaf of bread and pop that in it because that's the gun. And, uh, and you'll have a compact or a uh, subcompact maybe. I don't know, whatever they... And, and change calibers too. You can switch it out to a, I don't know, maybe a 22, a 40, a 45, you know, a 357 SIG. You know, all with having the same gun. And that's pretty... Or at least the same frame. You know, or, or the same firearm <laughs> there are countries where you're only allowed to own like one pistol or two pistols or three pistols and that's one of the uh, intents perhaps of that so you can buy buy this and then you can have different uh, configurations of it you know go compete with the full size maybe and then carry the compact you know so that's pretty neat and it wouldn't be so neat if it was hard to change out if it took three men and a boy to get that out right you saw me something and again i just had this for how long have I had it? For, uh, I don't know, about a week or so. And I've just done that two or three times, and uh, it's it's not that hard. So even I can do it. So it works pretty well. Now, watch me struggle. Here, I spoke too soon, probably. So then you work that back in. Make sure it's in there and it's back. Put this back in. You get it. It's not really hard. You just have to turn it a little bit. And as you're putting it in, and you'll come to the right spot. There we go. Okay, slide locks back in. So now it's a firearm again. Pretty cool. And and you know everything about it, it's it, you know it's SIG. It just feels uh, like like extreme quality. You know, as I always say about SIG, there's no no uh, question about that. They make great guns. Okay, and this one is striker fired. This is pretty cool to have a striker fired SIG. And right. putting back together. And we got my spring down enough there oh that was up a little bit let's see here what we have that's not exactly right well that I know that's actually supposed to be down like that and when you disassemble it you just to clean it that's where that would be and when I put it back in I left it up a little bit I believe that's what that was yeah okay all right so it's ready to go. So if I were going to take slide back off again, I'd pull that all the way down there like that. And see, it's not a problem. Back up. All right. Okay, SIG P320. Interesting. Feels pretty good in the hand. And it has a pretty nice trigger, I have to say. It, it really does. We've weighed them. We've measured it. And uh, But uh, first, let's take a couple more shots. It uh, is just out recently. You may not have seen it in a gun shop yet. Um, I, I like the trigger it has a it's a little different it's not the perfect trigger of all triggers but for a striker fired uh, pistol it's good it's good I felt some really nice triggers here at, at the compound I've had like the PPQs and uh, uh, SIGs you, you name it well you've seen all the firearms here I hope some of them have wonderful triggers no doubt about it that PPX had an incredible trigger on it, a different kind of trigger. But uh, this has a good trigger. I could uh, I could take this thing to a shooting match tomorrow and I wouldn't feel like I was at a disadvantage. It has a better trigger than probably some of my Glocks. Uh, but uh, it, I put it in that category. You know, some of the, the good Glock triggers, best Glock triggers. Because Glocks, not so much anymore, but you used to get a lot of variety. You know, Most of them are pretty good triggers now. But uh, it, it's a good trigger, good striker fire trigger in that category. Maybe maybe uh, one of the best. It has a little bit of a different feel to it. Uh, but if you just picked it up in a shop and, and you pulled it, if they let you pull the trigger, you might think, eh, not bad, but not so hot. Uh, sometimes, as I've pointed out before, you don't really get the feel of a trigger until you're running ammunition through the firearm. Uh, I've been surprised uh, several times. Uh, that way so the only thing about the trigger you notice I have a band-aid on my finger 
Uh, yeah, that's a band-aid. We might do band-aid reviews someday. Uh, I got bit by a rattlesnake. Actually, I didn't. This trigger hurts my finger, though. That's the only thing. Now, I don't know if it's me. Uh, I've only shot a few handguns where it pinches me or something, or it actually it hurts the bone in my, my trigger finger. It, it got the John a little bit, but not as bad as me. I picked, I shot it several times, and I picked it up here to shoot it before the video again, and after three or four shots, it was hurting me a little bit. So I went in and put a Band-Aid on. I get the same thing with a Glock 29, which is a 10 millimeter compact. That's the only other gun I have that does that. Of all the guns, the big Glock 20s or 45, no matter what, none of them have that impact on me. There's something about certain configurations of triggers and the relationship to the trigger guard is all I can figure out. I don't know what it is. I put a Band-Aid on it, it's fine. Now, it didn't hurt me or cut me or anything. I just put that on as a padding. And it's fine. So, <laughs> so I don't know what it is about that. I think it maybe it's that little sharp uh, curvature or something at the bottom that, that hits me. And I have a long finger, and I shoot them wrong. Now, if I shoot it like you're supposed to do, and I put just the pad on there, it doesn't do it. But, you know me, I don't do things like you're supposed to sometimes. I wrap through there, and uh, it, it just hits it at the very worst spot for me. Okay, that's probably just me, okay? Uh, your results might vary. All right, let's take another shot here. Okay, uh, it's a good shooter. Again, whether I can hit anything is another matter, but uh, it's a good shooter. Well, let's shoot the target. Let me warm up on the target here, the paper. Yeah. Yeah, I'm holding right on the bottom of the black. You're trying to. Yeah, it likes a six o'clock hold. I've discovered that because the time you get over there pretty far, like I'll shoot at the red plate and I have to hold on the bottom or just a hair below it. And then I'll still miss it probably, but. There you go. Yeah, if I'm holding just a couple inches below it, it pops it. Let's try this, Mr. Chicken. There we go. It's a good shooter. <laughs> uh, oh, you know what? I keep forgetting those uh, pieces of cinder block. Let's check the windage on this thing. Hmm. I might have to keep this one, <laughs> I tell you. Well, I mean, it's ours, but uh, let's, uh, let's just try a pig. What the heck? Boy, this is a, this is a nice gun. Let's try the gong. What a shooter. I'm not sure I can miss with it. Let me shoot left-handed, see if I can miss something here. Like that guy. <laughs> ah, smoke some more pot. Ah, man. Who else needs to be shot here? <laughs> okay. What did I tell you? It's a, it's a good shooter. I'm gonna have to load up again. All right, what did I not show you about it here? Well, of course you got your rails. It's polymer, it has a good grip. It feels good. It has a nice reset, That's clear. Uh, click, you know, resets. It's a short reset and a good feeling trigger. Again, the proof's in the pudding. Uh, if, 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 uh, if a firearm allows me to I will shoot with some precision, at least for me, at long range. I feel like, well, you can't do a lot better on the trigger, you know. Uh, I believe your uh, mag release can be reversed. Um, and you got, you got a, you know, that's interesting, your slide locks on both sides there, isn't it? Pretty interesting. Uh, so it's just a good feeling little gun. 
I'm uh, very pleased with it so far, other than that weird trigger thing that, uh, that hits me. Uh, I don't know if uh, maybe getting the Dremel tool out and working on that trigger would, would solve it for me. But I gave it several chances. I thought, well, maybe it's my imagination, but it's just uh, the way I, I grasp a, a trigger part of it. And I know all you expert shooters and trainers out there, you're going to tell me you need to be shooting with the pad of your trigger finger. And I just don't do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I never have. I refuse to do it. And, uh, but, but anyway, you yeah, know, I don't know. I don't know what to think about that, to tell you the truth, uh, in terms of whether I could own the pistol and carry it and shoot it and uh, a great deal without putting my Band-Aid on. Now, if I was carrying it, I could. If the bad guy, you know, had a sense of fair play, I could hold up there, buddy. Let me get my Band-Aid on, and uh, then we'll uh, engage each other. How's that? Now, we weighed both of them, and we measured them. And I know, I know. Give me a break. I do have the Glock 19 out here again. We're always dragging it out. I don't have a Glock 17. Uh, I know that would be more appropriate to have out today. But uh, let me show you what we discovered here. We've got uh, both of these are, are empty. And uh, in terms of weight, uh, of course we could look up the weight of a. Uh, this doesn't tell you a lot because it is a 19. You know, smaller that that weighs a pound five ounces three eighths okay 1.5 three eighths okay and then we've got this is uh what was it like nine so about uh, four more ounces you know so it's about four ounces heavier probably uh i guess is it'd be a couple ounces heavier than a glock 17 as well you got a shorter slide with this so obviously it's going to be heavier uh you know it's just a you know in terms of size that we shouldn't even be comparing i guess with the 19 because it's it's more of a 17 all right so i shouldn't even brought that out i guess but i did want to the thickness though is valid uh and i was surprised i i thought okay we got us a sig here you know the big slide and everything but it's really not that much bigger uh and if you if you measure the frame now except for the takedown over there uh just the frame you basically even have a thinner package than the the night the Glock. Let me open that up for the frame. Okay, now we've got the frame of the Glock 19. You know, that's all of that part goes in your holster. And you put that on this gun, and look at the difference. Okay. Except for, of course, the slide lock. So, you know, it's, it's not as big and thick as it might appear, as a lot of uh, SIGs do seem to be. Okay. Or some Walters, and, you know, some, some of these uh, gun companies, they make, they go ahead and make a gun. That, and more so than the Glock. I think because the Glock it came out with a nine millimeter first for you all that maybe you're not as familiar with the history of these firearms. It was in nine for years, that's all it was. And then when they decided to make it in 40, uh, they didn't change the slide or anything, or thickness or whatever. But since then, a lot of the companies that have come out with these sorts of firearms in 40 and nine and 45, they just went ahead and started with a frame and a slide configuration and size and weight that would handle all those calibers pretty well like for a 40 or 45 and then chamber it in nine so you get a springfield i guess kind of does the same thing it's a uh, walther right down the line uh, if i'm correct i think i'm i'm in the ballpark there and so they the same basic configuration is for all those calibers all right so we're uh, glock just sort of fitted the 42 that smaller uh, slide and they get some criticism for that because you get more recoil you know you do get they're pretty jumpy let's face it because of that so this one is a i'd say it's a nice compromise it's not much bigger thicker at all than the glock 1940 slide in size and everything and of course some of the new 45s even in glock and the you know 30s they were smaller and the 41 uh so you'll have you know different configurations barrels coming out and and if they're not out already for this uh, uh not bad not bad at all. The gun feels good. It feels good in the hand. It, it really does. It, it fits, uh, you know, we brag about the CZs and some of the others. This feels really good in the hand. Uh, it points well. You got, you know, the sights are, are right on there and the trigger is nice. I don't have a lot of negatives uh, to, to talk about other than that trigger and what it does to me. All right. It might be just because it doesn't like me. Let me uh, try a couple more shots here. So.
put him in the holster. Oh, this holster comes with it, by the way. <laughs> it's kind of nice because I doubt there are a lot of holsters out there yet available for it. So let's shoot at that tree. I do like a pistol where I can take a six o'clock hold. I'll have to say, uh, most of your striker fired modern polymer pistols, uh, they, they tend to hit right at point of aim. I know Glocks do, and most of the others. I, I like that six o'clock hold. I could, uh, I could learn to love that. Let's try uh, just for kicks over there. Let me throw a couple at the Rams. Probably won't knock them over, but just like to hit them and hear it hit. I was bouncing all over the place. Okay, let's try that turkey. Oh, there he went. <laughs> Again, that's another example. You know, hit the chicken and hit little targets over there. Just because a target is bigger, yeah, I don't need to take a side picture and, and get a good trigger break or anything like that. Let's do one last magazine with it. Let's do a little uh, machine gunning. Uh, don't be alarmed now. I don't mean it seriously. Just uh, shoot the thing as you know, fast as I can. I like the, I like the pistol. I got him a band aid, but I like, I like the pistol. It, uh, if you weren't around for the first part of the video, I got the snake bit there. All right, I uh, it just uh, I don't know. I might have a little weird bone in my finger actually too. I, I sound like I'm trying to make excuses for the gun. I'm really not because I'm. I, I really, I, I couldn't take it to battle or to competition if I didn't, didn't have that. It just hurts. It's not fun to shoot. But the least little bit of padding takes care of it. I have that same exact experience with my Glock 29. And uh, to the point where if that weren't a gun that I, I won, I, may have, I told that story before uh, in a GSSF match years ago. If it weren't a, a trophy gun, I would trade it. Yeah, I, I have switched the trigger out in it two or three different times. It's just a, a, a some kind of weird phenomenon. I'll just, anyway, I get that same thing with this gun. Oh yeah, I was gonna try to shoot fast. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's just fun, you know. Nice trigger, nice gun. Uh, I don't think there's anything that, uh, you know, I didn't tell you that uh, that I know about it that is semi-important, has, has nice three-dot sights, and uh, easy to use, it breaks down easily. Uh, lightweight, uh, for as big as it is, it's really not very heavy. Uh, even though it comes out at four ounces heavier than that Glock 19, it would be closer to a uh, Glock 17, of course, in weight feels great in the hand and uh, I mean this is one SIG I can brag on maybe more than any I've had you know out here at the compound because uh, the only negative for me is the trigger and that might not be for you for some of you who have, have fired one of these uh, John, ex John had that experience a little bit he hasn't shot it as much uh, would be I'd be interested to know if am I the only weirdo that that has that you know that uh, reaction on the trigger finger uh, you probably use proper technique and it doesn't hit you that way. But anyway, uh, a winner, pig, uh, pig P320 uh, from Sig Sauer. And it hasn't been out all that long. I don't know if you're seeing them in shops yet. I don't think I've seen that many of them. But uh, a great gun. We appreciate uh, Top Gun Supply sending this to us. And uh, that way we got one to fire and let you know what I think about it. I like it other than my little pinky or my little trigger finger. Life is good. Thank <laughs> you.